Hi there, I was planning to uh, get back to my uh, Jerry Howell V-Twin um, but uh, something's been bugging me and uh, I, I just don't like not being able to solve puzzles and in my last video I showed you the hobbing machine that I made and um, the, the gears that it was making, um, the, the gap between the teeth was slightly malformed so um, I really want to try and work out what's going on there. Now I, th I think there's maybe one or two possibilities um, it's either the encoder um, that's feeding into the Arduino is losing steps or losing pulses or it could be that the uh, stepper uh, driver and motor is losing pulses and uh, having sort of like discussed it with, uh, with Adam, my electronics expert, Adam reckons that these open loop stepper motors um, and drivers can actually loose steps if they're under a little bit of uh, torque so in, in order to eradicate that what you can do is don't, don't use the open loop but use a closed loop stepper motor and driver so in this video I'm going to show you what I bought and uh, I'll try and get it all hooked up and what I've also done is I've um, written a new version of my um, test uh, hobbing script uh, which is uh, slightly more intelligent really now and uh, I'll be using that to uh, help me diagnose the problem if it continues to uh, be a problem. Now the stepper online kit that I've just bought it consists of three major components and the first one is this power supply 36 volts and it's uh, made by Meanwell. Now the stepper motor is an EMA 23 um, so it'll, it'll fit in the existing sort of mounting that I've got uh, but it's quite substantial, quite a lot longer than the other one um, I've purchased and this is uh, 3nm uh, 4.2 amps. Now this particular motor, that being a closed loop, it's got two connections going to it. Um, one connection this one here, um, that's um, connected to the coils, so that's coming out of the uh, stepper driver. But this one here, I think this is attached to its own internal rotary encoder. So this feeds back into the uh, stepper driver and uh, the stepper driver, I think how it works is it's intelligent and it can work out whether or not the motor's turned the number of steps that it asked it to and if it hasn't it resolves that particular problem so uh, all in all pr pretty uh, pretty clever stuff really so the stepper controller is a CL57T uh, version 4 I think and um, I'll show you a uh, sort of like a wiring diagram that uh, Adam sort of sent me to tell me how to do this so the documentation from uh, Stepper Online is uh, pretty good really, no complaints there. And um, this is the documentation for the actual uh, Stepper motor. And what I did was to, uh, on these pins here, I uh, ran a continuity tester to find out um, which sort of leads uh, matched, each, matched each motor. So on this particular motor, I'm sure it's different on others, um, but pin number one is black, two is green, three is red, and four is blue. And this is a bit of a, a crib sheet that uh, Adam produced me. Um, I've had to change some of these because, uh, like I've just said, the, the green and the black are for the uh, A-coil and the red and the blue for the B coil and here it he says just check with a continuity tester to find out which are which. Now for the motor encoder um, which is feeding back into um, the stepper driver um, these are the connections you used so these are the connections on the actual stepper driver and um, you need to uh, set the voltage, the control voltage, so this is 
um, for the signals coming from the Arduino uh, set it for the 5 volts and then set these dip switches accordingly so I'm going for 800 steps per revolution on a 3 to 1 ratio that's uh, 3 8 to 2400 and here set the uh, motor um, on here it says leave default I have done I'm not too sure about that um, but having done that it all seems to uh, certainly turn now there's uh, quite a few more connections on here uh, compared to a normal sort of stepper driver these are the same I think uh, or mostly the same so you've got a pull plus pull minus the AR plus minus ENA plus minus an alarm BRK and I think COM minus is new um, these are all new and these are the these are the um, sort of inputs that are coming from the motor uh, from the encoder on the motor and uh, here we've got the outputs going to the motor in the same way as the uh, other driver so this is the encoder uh, running my program and um, the inputs and outputs are fairly straightforward we've got plus 5 volts coming out here going to the uh, encoder We've got ground going to the encoder and to the uh, pull minus and DIR minus on the uh, stepper driver. Um, we've got those, these two pins here accepting input from the um, encoder. So they're going to pins two and three. And uh, the output from here is A1, um, which is going to pull plus. So that's the signal basically telling the uh, motor to turn. Now this is running my uh, program and uh, I've changed my program to, so it can uh, save the um, spindle PPR and the encoder PPR uh, in EEPROM. Uh, so once th those details are, are entered um, you don't need to change them, it remembers them. You can change them if you want but uh, it does remember uh, in the future. So in here um, if I just press enter, so I'm going to go 20 teeth. Uh, the encoder PPR, it's just read that from EEPROM. I can change that if I want. If I change it, it'll rewrite it to EEPROM. So 2400 and the uh, spindle PPR 2400. And that's it. So uh, it's going to read in uh, 20 uh, signals from the uh, rotary encoder and uh, shove one signal out to the um, motor. Okay, so to uh, just show you the uh, workings of this, I'll switch on the power that's going to the uh, stepper driver. And uh, this is pretty much locked now. So if I turn the uh, mill on, so it'll turn the rotary encoder. Okay, so uh, to get it tested, I need to connect it onto my uh, hobbing machine, and um, the bracket's the same. But the problem I've got is the uh, the pulley that was on my other motor. Um, it had a hole for a six millimeter shaft. Now this is eight millimeters, and unfortunately, my pulley is too small. It won't allow um, an eight millimeter hole in it. Uh, it'll just fall apart if I do that. So uh, I've got an order. Um, some more pulleys. I've uh, got a 16 tooth pulley to go on here and a 48 tooth pulley to uh, actually go on the hobbing machine spindle. That will give it a 3 to 1 ratio. Okay so while we're waiting for those pulleys to arrive I might as well tell you a bit about this uh, program I've written. Um, three versions of it so far. It keeps um, sort of like improving um, over time and uh, there's a bit of history there. It uses the EEPROM uh, library which allows me to uh, save the encoder and spindle PPR values to EEPROM um, so those don't, don't have to be entered again uh, if they don't change. I use the encoder library um, which is the uh, TNC encoder library which is supposed to be pretty good. 
Uh, I do various setups here and initialize some values. I use the uh, Liquid Crystal library um, for the uh, keypad LCD shield and I do some initialization there as well. Okay, so for the setup, um, I try to read the encoder PPR from uh, an EEPROM uh, memory location of 100. And uh, if it's less than zero, I assume that it's never been saved before, so I take a default of 2400. Then I do a similar thing for the spindle PPR, getting that from memory location 104. Then I save these uh, two values into an array, which is defined up here. And uh, these are just some default values I've used, a bit, a bit, a bit historical those. Uh, but that value is uh, re remains the same. That's the default value for teeth, 20. So uh, further down here, um, I request the number of teeth to be entered. And then I use this routine here, display four digit integer so it looks at that me those memory locations and then displays those values on the LCD uh, display and then get four digit integer. This reads the L LCD keypad um, and uh, tries to determine um, any changes to those values. And uh, having got any changes, it then calculates the number of teeth based upon the new values in the memory location. Then I do a very similar thing for the encoder PPR and for the spindle PPR. And if the encoder PPR has changed from what it was previously, I then write the value to EEPROM again. Um, I don't want to write it if it hasn't changed because EEPROM's got a limited amount of um, sort of number of writes before it starts degrading. I think 100,000 writes, which is Quite a long way off, to be honest. Anyway, having done that, um, I do some various checks. And uh, then these are all the sort of routines that I've mentioned before. Um, oh, I, I do something called find lowest ratios here. So if, if and I um, set input input pulse uh, to be the encoder PPR multiplied by the number of teeth and the output pulse to be the spindle PPR. Then I use this find the lowest ratios. So what this tries to do is work the numbers down into whole numbers, the lowest whole numbers possible. Um, so for example, if the um, input pulse PPR ends up as being 4800, and the output pulse is 2400, it'll work out the uh, ratio as being 2 to 1. And uh, having got those numbers, then it runs into a tight loop here. So it reads the uh, encoder count um, using the TNC function, and this encoder count constantly increases. So I check to see if it's changed since the last time, and if it has, well, it will have done. And uh, if, if the encoder counts greater than the input pulse uh, that I'm looking for, then it tries to determine whether or not it's, it's uh, the CPU sort of struggling. Um, I won't go into how that works, but it should be quite self-explanatory if you sort of read it and uh, try to digest it. So having found that the encoder count, the difference in the encoder count is greater than the input pulse, uh, I then go into this for loop, um, so it'll output a pulse um, based upon the number of output pulses defined. Now that, that probably isn't fantastic if the output pulse is greater than one, uh, but uh, t testing will prove uh, whether that's right or wrong. And, and essentially that's it. Just keeps on looping around. Forever. And I, I think um, this value that comes from the um, encoder read function is a massive value. Um, let me see how it's defined. Um, it's a long, I think. And I think long's a 
really massive values and if you work out if it's running at 600 rpm it would probably run 24 hours before it actually sort of uh, went back to zero okay so the new pulleys and uh, the belt have arrived so i fitted those so we will give it a try moment of truth okay so now i'll uh, have a go at cutting a uh, 32 uh, tooth gear for the uh, jury howl v-twin So the gear on the left is one that I made with a normal gear cutter and the one on the right is one made with the um, hobbing machine and you can see that the gap between the teeth on the hobbed gear is just ever so slightly wider than the uh, one on the non-hobbed gear. I mean they engage perfectly well. So I'm not sure I'm going to get any better than that. And here the gear on the right is the one I've just uh, hobbed, it's the smaller gear. And the one on the left was uh, cut using a normal cutter. And Again, you can just see that that gap between the teeth is just slightly bigger. And with uh, the two hopped gears, you can see there's just a slight, li slight bit of play there. Now this gear is one that uh, I hobbed using Andy's code and um, an open loop stepper motor and the one on underneath is the one I've just made with closed loop and I think they're pretty much identical. Well, I think it's time for a rethink. Um, I mean, I'm producing uh, gears now that were pretty much identical to the ones I was producing before I put the closed loop um, stepper motor on. Um, now I'm convinced that I'm not missing any incoming pulses because I think the results would be a bit random. Uh, I'm 100% sure that I'm not missing any steps going out to the uh, motor um, what else could it be? Um, the, the code I'm sure is spot on. Andy's machine code he, he uses all the time. I've rewritten, well I've written my version and I get identical results so it's not a coding issue. The only thing I can conclude is it might be something to do with the hob. Now I, I can't believe that the hob's been machined incorrectly. But the only other thing I can think of is maybe I've got the angle wrong. So that's the only thing I can think to check now. So now I'm just double checking that this uh, angle of the spindle is correct. So uh, if I move this down an inch, uh, this should read about around about 23 and a quarter thou. That's an inch. Well, it's tw certainly 23. So I don't think I can get much closer than that. It's not way out, is it? Okay, so I've got another plan here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this 32 tooth gear. And then I'm gonna move the table to one side. 
I'm just going to let it run for around about 10 minutes. Then I'm going to introduce the cut again. Now that will prove to me that if, if it doesn't cut any material off on the second run, then synchronisation is spot on. Okay, so if there's a synchronisation issue, when I move the cutter in now, it should destroy the teeth. A little bit of something removed, but nothing major. So the gear on top is the one that I uh, cut with a uh, 10 minute delay between cuts. And the one at the bottom is uh, just cut in one pass. And you can see here, on that edge there, it's straighter than that edge there. So I think there's a very, very slight sink issue there. So I think what I need to do is to uh, have another go, but with a five minute delay. So this is a five minute delay between cuts. So I've made my first cut five minutes ago, and I'm going to repeat it again. Sounds like just a little bit of material taken off there. So the gear on the right has got a five minute delay between cuts and you can see there just that edge there just slightly different to that edge there so i think it's just trimmed a little bit off on the second cut not as bad as the one with the, the 10 minute delay but that tells me there is a slight sink problem nothing major um but if, if you can see that over five minutes, then to cut a gear probably takes a minute and a half. So it could introduce an element of, of error. Well, that was an interesting exercise and uh, very interesting messing around with uh, closed loop uh, stepper motors and drivers. So that was a good thing to learn. Just a shame I've not been able to nail it in this video. And... Uh, from the tests I've undertaken, I mean, it's pretty much proven that Andy's code is perfect. And uh, if it wasn't, he'd be having problems. And uh, the fact that I've been able to duplicate that code uh, in, in script form and uh, generate the same result uh, proves that it's not a programming issue. Um, the fact now that I've got these closed, the closed loop stepper motor and driver uh, that eradicates the possibility of losing steps going out. Um, there is this slight loss of synchronisation over time, um, which I suppose, you know, it's very, very slight over 10 minutes, but I suppose if you're cutting a gear for a duration of a minute, it could introduce, you know, slight, slightly malformed teeth. Um, so, to me, that would point to just one thing, and that's the uh, encoder on the milling machine. Um, so maybe that's missing steps, or maybe the Arduino's missing incoming steps from that encoder. I don't know. 
Um, that's the only thing I can think of. The, the only other slight possibility, but this wouldn't introduce synchronization issues, is that, you know, I just wonder whether it'd be worth me trying a different hub uh, to see if that generates exactly the same problem. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm not sure where I go from here. Um, but I, I just don't like things beating me. <laughs> I don't like puzzles uh, not being able to uh, to solve them. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you later.